All right, so uh, in this lesson, we've got our 9800 controller built. We've got uh, our Wi-Fi 6 eight, 8 access points that are registered, but we don't have any WLANs or any policy profiles. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to start rolling out some WLANs and policy profiles, and we're just going to take it step by step. So uh, we've got this controller one here. Again, he is running uh, the Cupertino code, uh, 1793. And we've got these two access points registered. One is a 9120 and the other one is the 9136 with six gigahertz connectivity. Uh, and we basically have the controller stood up. We've got the switch stood up. We've got these IP uh, ranges that are configured on the switch for DHP and uh, AD and ICE integrated. But we're really focusing step by step with our policy profiles and our WLAN profiles. That's the goal of this particular lesson. So, uh, and, and to understand those building blocks, right? So I'm going to log into the AD node we have here, which is kind of our admin machine. And we're going to go under configuration. And I like to start off with our profiles and tags. I like to start off with our policy profiles. Okay. So policy profiles are, you can think of as uh, basically session parameters. The way I like to explain it is uh, we've got two building blocks now. Okay. We've got 802.11 and that's what happens in the air or over the air, right? So uh, that's where WLAN profiles come in. Those WLAN settings that are what happens whenever you're you're talking over 802.11 over the air. Then we need to take that traffic and we need to get it to the wired uh, network somewhere. And the policy profile is that building block. So what I want you to think about is policy profiles. What happens once I have that session connected to the controller terminating on the wired side? That's where uh, policy profiles come in. You need both of those to be in a policy tag to create a service set nowadays. So I like to start off with, again, a policy profile. And we're just going to call this one uh, WT uh, data. Or actually, you know what? Let's call this uh, Wi-Fi training. Now, I typically uh, do this underscore and then PP for uh, policy profile or PT for policy tag. It helps me quickly filter whenever I'm searching with CLI. Uh, the type of element that I'm, I'm building and I'm using. And we're just going to say this is uh, Wi-Fi training default uh, policy profile. And the, the, the object of this, guys, is to create an element that can be reused, right? So you don't typically have to have one for one policy profile to WLAN profile. It's only really if you need to do something different with that session, have different session timers, or you know something about that session is going to be different. If we're using ICE, for example, and we're just you know terminating different VLANs or different ACLs, you don't have to create a different policy profile for that. You could have one that's Wi-Fi training ICE connected service sets because ICE would then give our VLAN an ACL assignment based on authentication instead of uh, just this default mapping we're about to do. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it. Again, it won't do anything. It's kind of like uh, many, many elements in CLI it doesn't do anything until you, uh, you know, to create that object. It only takes effect once you put those objects to work, right? And that's with our tags. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up uh, with radius, HTTP, and DHP. Now we're not using radius yet, but it's just kind of best practice to have this turned on for WLANs where we're doing that. And in the future, I'll probably use this policy profile for those reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I'm going to map this to the VLAN group data. Okay, so that goes to uh, two different VLANs we have there. And then we've got uh, QoS ABC. Now the default uh, QoS policies on these 9800s are actually really good. You don't have to uh, do a lot of overrides like we did with airspace. Okay, so the default is going to work for most uh, use cases, voice, video, data, um, and you shouldn't really have to do much with it, right? Now you've got the option for voice, you've got the option for fast link. I don't want to get in that too much because there's a lot to this now and it is not the same as it was with our airspace days. We're not going to do anything with mobility that's strange uh, or terminate traffic in any different way. So we're not going to worry about that page, but this is where kind of all the magic happens, right? Um, session timers are a very big deal. They're a very big um, a reason that clients have issues sometimes if they're not configured correctly. Uh, the Session timer is only going to last 24 seven, no matter what you do, no matter what value you put in. So uh, there in the earlier code, I always hate doing zero because in the earlier code, zero meant that you, you didn't have any session timer that every time you joined an AP, you had to re-authenticate. So there was no fast roaming. 
Uh, nowadays, zero means for the lifetime of a maximum lifetime of the session, meaning 24 hours. All right, but I would just get in the habit of just putting 86,400, and that'll give us that time period we want. For client exclusion, it's best to do three minutes there, so I always do that. A DHP is required, okay, for this service. Again, this is our first service set. There's a lot to talk about with DHP uh, with our options, but also uh, understanding that this is a very important checkbox because, uh, you know, if I've got all these VLANs available and I have a mobility view domain and I don't require DHP, then somebody with a static IP could join the WLAN and get terminated if the controller or a controller in the mobility group knows how to terminate that traffic. It will basically hunt down the controller that can terminate the traffic and live there. So it's security risk if we don't have that enabled. Now again, I'm not doing anything with ICE yet on this uh, service set, so I'm not gonna enable this part, but normally I would do AAA over at next state and have a policy name. We'll get to that in a minute. Art proxy, this is very good for battery life savings of your devices. The controller basically answers ARP uh, on behalf of the client because it knows the clients that are connected through the client session table, right? So we'll go ahead and enable that. Apply to device. By the way, all those session timers, those need to be consistent across controllers in a large enterprise, okay? So you don't want one controller to have a different session timer than another controller that'll create for this you know, mixed experience of the users. You don't want that. All right, so now that we've got our uh, policy profile, we need a WLAN profile. Okay, so I'm gonna go down just using this menu here because I'm staying within tags and profiles and we're gonna create a new one. And again, this one, we were going to let me just Wi-Fi training SSID and we're gonna do WPA3 SAE. So uh, we're gonna do Wi-Fi training here and we'll leave that as the SSID because that's what we're building. We're gonna enable it. And if you notice, um, part of this, you said WPA3, well, WPA3 is a requirement of six gigahertz, okay? I've got the brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max and been waiting to show you guys some six gigahertz stuff. So we're gonna start off right off the bat doing WPA3 and six gigahertz. I'm gonna leave five enabled also. Uh, we'll talk about that in some upcoming lessons, but uh, basically that mixed mode, WPA3 is the important thing. And then we can start putting new devices, whether they support 6E or not on the new service set. Uh, and then that way, whenever they get a new device that does support 6E, it's just gonna be seamless. But WPA3 support is required for six gigahertz and it's required to be able to do this mixed mode architecture, right? At least on 17.9.3. Once we get to uh, Dublin, that changes a little bit, but um, for now, you, you need to have WPA3 supported, right? So we've got to come over here and check WPA3 box. And then you notice that's going to change our options a bit, right? So you got no more options for, for these guys. It goes ahead and checks WPA3. And then it's like, all right, what are we going to do adaptive here? Okay, we've got required protective management frames. AES, CCMP, 128. Well, if we're going to do SAE, right, it says fast transition needs to be disabled for that. Now, remember, pre-shared key is already fast, okay? We don't have to go out to a radius server for a pre-shared key, but we can do FT, SAE, and we can say it's enabled. It's just that adaptive is, is not as friendly with the WPA3 standard. It's either got to be enabled or it's not, okay? So it's already fast but this does reduce that uh, roaming time substantially, okay? So as long as clients support it, we want to definitely be able to uh, use Fast Transition Plus SAE. Protective management frame is required with WPA3. And again, I could go to a much stronger encryption here and just use Suite B, for example. But for now, we're just going to keep this simple. And we'll put in our password here. Okay, so this says uh, SAE password element. What are we doing? And, and it's both hash to element or hunting and pecking only. And we're just gonna choose hash to element. Okay, now we've got our WLAN. We know our uh, password. And there's a couple different ways. Let me just make sure I put this in right. There's a couple different ways we could uh, assign this to a tag, right? As long as my policy profile is built first, I could come right here and do it, right? And just use, we're just gonna use the default just to get this lit up and working. Um, 
but that's uh, that's one way to do it, right? The other way is just to go to my policy tags and do it from there. So on this one, since it's our first one, we're just gonna go here to tags and there's default uh, tags. Remember, the APs get their configuration now through these tags. If you are not familiar with the profiles and tags concept that you've seen me talk about in this video, please go out and watch the free video I've done over 9800 profiles and tags that explains them in depth, okay? Now, uh, there's a default policy tag, there's a default site tag and a default RF tag. So the fastest way to just get services up is just use the defaults. But in production, you really do not want to use the default policy tags because it's security risk, right? All right, why well, is it a security risk? Because every new AP that joins, if you don't pre-provision them or pre-prime them, they're gonna get these default tags. And if you have services allowed that, you know, maybe shouldn't be, they're gonna get that, right? So we're just gonna click add, and this is where we map our WLAN profile to our policy profile, okay? Click okay, update and apply. And now we've got, um, we should have our access point that's advertising that. If I wanna see to make sure my access point, how they're configured, uh, we've got this AP statistics page, a couple different ways to see that. One of the things I like to do is come to the network icon here. You'll know if that's red, there's problems, right? Red is problems. If it's blue, should be working fine. But once I click on this, I can see the WLAN profile. The green means it's up. If I see the policy profile, green means it's up. I can see it's terminating to data and I can see it's using WPA3. I've also got this default uh, site profile and that has the def or default site tag, which has the default AP profile. And you can see those features are up from that. And then finally, we've got our three 2.45 and six gigahertz RF profiles. Again, they're defaults right now. Haven't done anything crazy with them, but we can see those are up. Okay, so that's just a quick view to know that, hey, that, that AP is working, right? All right, so let's start our uh, connection here. So what I'm gonna do is put the phone up here. We're gonna start a little screen record. Turn our Wi-Fi on. Got our Wi-Fi train SSID. All right, now we don't have internet in this service yet. So it, it may give us some flack that is, you know, saying, hey, there's no internet connection, right? But what I care about is did my client join right, the service? So if we come over here and we go to clients, you can see, hey, I am joined. I am, and you gotta do that keep trying Wi-Fi, right? I am joined, I'm on 802.11ax6. Okay, you can see negotiated capable. I am on six gigahertz. I've got kind of a crappy signal strength here, but you know, still six gigahertz connected and we're using WPA3 and all that. You know what I'm gonna do for now? Let's change our policy profile. And what I'm gonna have it do is map to an internet capable uh, service set. So I have one VLAN that will get us to the internet. And if I put us on that, just update and apply. Now we're going to be able to connect to the internet. Okay, so now we're on the internet. Again, we don't have the best RSSI, but let's take a look at our speed test. It's a brand new phone, so not everything is going to be up and working on it. And this service I'm going through is only like a 70 meg service. So it's not the best, but it is what's in the labs, right? And getting 70 megs, so it's not too bad. On the download anyway, upload is much slower. It's like 15. So we're basically getting 100% of that. But what you gotta understand is my fire rate is much, much faster, right? So what I'm actually connecting at 
if you come over to monitoring and your clients, because this is very, very slow for Wi-Fi 6, right? I just don't have the bandwidth here to show it off. But if we look at our clients, even at a, you know, NEG 78, right? Uh, that's looking pretty bad, actually. I doubted it would be this slow of signal and usable because we know we're obviously much faster than this. It says connection speed is 24 megs. We know we're obviously much, much faster uh, because we just did 70 megs throughput to the internet, which you got to be faster than that. So, um, but yeah, there's our first service set. We are connected and let me turn this off. Very easy, pretty sure key. And if I go to security information here, you can see all of the details that was that, right? So there's my service template. I was mapped to the internet. There's my session timer. There's the VLAN, all that kind of good stuff, the result properties. So very straightforward um, getting connected with WPA3 and 6 gigahertz, right? Even though I don't have all the, the great bandwidth to show you guys, but still, you, you get the point. So we have more WLANs to configure now. Um, we're going to build on this, and we're going to uh, take you through all the new WPA3 stuff, as well as the 6 gigahertz stuff, and talk about some of those settings. So hopefully you're enjoying it, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.